delight to introduce uh, speakers from L'Office du Gérier, um, people who are working very hard to revitalize Gérier, which is the Norman language spoken in Jersey in the Channel Islands. And I'm particularly pleased uh, to do so because, as some of you may know, uh, Gérier is the focus of my own uh, academic uh, research. So before I um, introduce the, the, the uh, speakers, I just want, I've got one little housekeeping uh, rule. Um, if you have any questions for the speakers, um, please would you um, save that until after, till the Q&A session, Q session, which will take place after uh, the speakers have finished speaking, please. And uh, after the speakers have finished, of course, if you do have any questions, um, two options, either would you please write them in the chat and I'll have a look and, and read them out and we'll get through as many of those as we can. Or if you would indeed like to speak, um, I can invite you to put up your virtual hand. You'll find that uh, in the reactions uh, button on your screen. Um, and then I'll invite you to unmute yourself and, and speak. Uh, and as I say, we'll, we'll get through as many uh, questions as time allows. So I am going to uh, introduce then um, uh, the, the, the head of the Gérier Teaching uh, Service, um, uh, Ben Spink. Um, and Ben, uh, has had, says me, he's had a passion uh, for languages all his life. He started with French school and worked as a primary teacher and a language specialist uh, for a number of years. Uh, before then seizing the opportunity to pursue what was his lifelong ambition, that uh, of learning Jersey's uh, native language. He um, was employed as a Gérier teacher in January of 2018 and then took over as a head of the service in 2020. So his role is to manage the teaching service um, and also, of course, to teach uh, Gérier himself. So working at the coalface of language revitalization, uh, he also oversees the implementation of the Gérier language uh, strategy, which covers language planning, language acquisition, language use, uh, status uh, and uh, corpus. The other speakers that we hear tonight, Ben will uh, introduce uh, as, as they uh, come to speak. Um, we're very pleased to, to have them here. Uh, we have um, Jean Lemaitre, who is a native speaker of Gérier, a language activist and campaigned actually at the forefront of the campaign for Gérier to uh, be allowed for the very first time in the uh, schools of uh, Jersey uh, some 20 years ago now. Uh, so really uh, at, the, at the center of the campaign and um, you know, has, has really sustained uh, this uh, movement from its outset. And we have um, two uh, of the Gérier uh, teachers, uh, part of the Gérier teaching service. We have Susan uh, Parker, who's uh, quite a recent addition uh, to the team and uh, Charlie Le Maistre, who is actually Jean Le Maistre's uh, nephew, um, who um, is also um, working hard um, as part of the team to provide a Gérier for the very first time to school children uh, in, in the primary school and, uh, and in the early uh, years as well. So I will let them explain uh, more about themselves um, as the presentation proceeds, but um, say les bienvenus, you are very welcome. We are delighted to have you here. Thank you very much. Merci bien des faits. Merci bien des faits, Marie. Uh, bonsoir, bonjour. J'ai un grand plaisir de vous parler en hier. Mon nom est Ben, ben Spink et je suis le chef de l'enseignement du Gérier. Uh, so good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to talk to you today. Uh, my name is Ben Spink and I'm the head of the Gérier Teaching Service. So as Mary explained, you'll hear from four speakers this evening. Uh, first of all, you'll hear from Jean Lemaitre, a native Gérier speaker and as Mary quite rightly said, a long time activist, campaigner, supporter of the Gérier language. Uh, then you'll hear from, from Charlie, the mate, um, who'll talk to you about the schools program, uh, particularly focusing on the primary school initiatives. And then you'll hear from Susan about the secondary schools program and our digital initiatives. And then finally, you'll hear from me uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about our adult program and our Gérier language strategy. So, uh, merci Brande Fay, thank you very much for now, and I'll hand you over to Jean Lemaitre. Uh, bonjour, 
Bonjour, bonjour. Euh, J'ai un vrai plaisir pour moi. Un honneur de pouvoir participer à cette Ivanier électronique à Nier. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a real pleasure and an honor to be able to participate in this webinar today. I suppose if I was to head up what I'm about to say, it's very much in the mode of setting the scene of how we got to where we are today. I think it's very interesting to look back on the recent tortuous journey of our wonderful language. In the early 1900s, there were huge language changes going on in Jersey. In 1901, the states accepted English as the official language, a step towards replacing French. The Estateford was introduced in 1904, and four years later, competitions were added in Geria. The adjudicator was none other than Arthur Bullen, who gave prizes to children under 13, specifically aimed to encourage them to use Geria. Now I'm hugely indebted to the late John Denise and Angela Le Pavou. Uh, they, they were the president and secretary of Le Congrès des Parlés Normands for so meticulously recording significant events and dates for Gérier. During the First World War, for example, there was an upsurge of Gérier publications. And in the 1920s, the Glossaire was produced by La Société. Another upsurge of publications occurred during the Second World War. Le Dombalen was established in 1943 with funds from the will of Arthur Edwin Balen. L'Assemblée Gérienne was formed in 1951. And as a child, I have wonderful memories of my so-called important role, at least I thought it was, of selling the Bulletin du Cardon, as my father was the editor. It was published between 1952 and 1977 and has been called a mine of information about the traditional Jersey way of life. Annually, its four volumes were packed with articles, ditons, vocabulary lists, folklore, and other texts. A second glossaire was produced by La Société in 1960, and the Dictionnaire Jersier Francais was launched in 1966, coincidentally on the 14th of October, marking the 900th anniversary of the Battle of Hastings. In 1972, the English Shere vocabulary was, by Albert Carre was published. This was followed by Histoire de Jean Jerry and Jerry Jadi by Georges Lefebvre, published by Le Dobalen. Interestingly, an lecture Gériès was first broadcast by BBC Radio Jersey in 1983. And that year, Le Dombalen was awarded Le Prix Littéraire du Cotentin. I have great memories of being part of the delegation that received Le Prix in La Manche, Basse Normandie. In 1985, Paul Burt wrote Le Gériès pour Two published again by Le Dobalen. I love the, the statement of Professor Burt, now at Ottawa University, where he says, there are few languages that I know with such a richness of expression. Some of her idioms are poetry. It's also a language which reflects a certain society and a certain experience of life which has culminated over centuries. In short, Jersey Norman French belongs to Jersey, and without it, Jersey would, I believe, stop being Jersey. Another interesting and important initiative in 1993 was John Denise approaching the president of education to introduce classes in schools, sadly, without success. Moving to 1985, I visited the Isle of Man to research their progress of revitalizing Manx. 
I was seriously impressed with their success in schools and in the community. And in fact, I was so inspired that I sought a meeting with a good friend and colleague in the States, Len Norman, who was president of education. We agreed that I would engage with the media to inform the island about our unique heritage and particularly our language. I knew the editor of the JB, the head of Channel TV and the BBC Radio Jersey manager. All were extremely supportive and agreed to run a series of articles. Len and I then signed a letter to all primary school parents asking if they would wish their children to learn GDA in schools. The result was amazing, with around 732 families interested, representing 940 children. Also, over 400 parents wanted to learn GDA. This was fantastic evidence which enabled the Education Committee to propose a two-year trial to the states. Although opposed by the Finance Committee, they actually ended up voting in favor with only one state's member voting contra. In March, 1996, Angela Lepavu represented Jerie at the first Visionet conference on minority languages in Cardiff. And I'm told that as a direct result of, of Angela attending that conference, our well-loved Dr. Murray Jones from Cambridge University and Chris Reynolds, the development officer for the Welsh for Adults Consortia, visited Jersey in the summer of that year. So with a positive decision by the States, Tony Scott Warren was recruited in 1998 by Le Don to begin the tough task of preparing teaching materials to be used in schools. Tony was joined some time later by Geran Jennings, and then I think around two years later, Colin Ison was appointed. Between 160 and 200 students in primary schools were taught each year and a good number participated in the Gerie Estetford. Sadly, support for Gerie from the Education Department from 2005 onwards was very mixed. There was a real failure to recognize the urgent need to teach the language to new teachers so they could eventually replace the existing teachers when they retired. In 2016, I had the idea to invite Dr. Murray Jones to deliver a series of lectures to members of the state, civil servants, members of the heritage organizations, schools, and members of the public to explain the wealth of Jerie and to alert everyone that urgent action was needed to avoid losing the language forever. We shall be eternally grateful to now Professor Marie Jones for her passion, support and commitment to Gerie, and also for the languages of Guernsey and Sark. We recognize the courage of, our, of the state's members who supported the revival program with funding for the next few years. We now have seven teachers, several of whom are still learning Gerie. The inspiration for where we are today, largely, as far as I'm concerned, came from the Isle of Man and also Wales. I acknowledge the massive contribution of so many people who refused to give up when the odds were stacked against us. We should also recognize those who grasped the vision such as the late Len Norman, and politicians who more recently have still had to fight in support of Gerie. We thank the current and previous chief ministers and the council of ministers and states members for their support. 
Revival of a minority language is a tough task, but we now see how well the teaching has been and continues to be received in schools. The teaching team and the education department deserve the highest praise for their determination and for understanding the current fragility of our language. The battle, however, is far from over, but we have made great strides in the last five years. I urge those in key positions not to waver, but to hold fast to this vision, which is one of the central elements of our culture, our identity, indeed our soul. So may I quote, may I close with a quote from Professor Chomsky. He says, a language is not just the sounds that people produce. A language is a repository of cultural wealth, of our traditions, of historical consciousness, of community solidarity. It's a very rich system of human existence. When it is lost, all of that is lost with it. That's a serious blow to all of us, not just to technical linguists who are losing a part of their evidence. Merci et bon courage à tous. Merci, Van Efe, Jean. Uh, thank you very much, Jean. So, um, so that kind of gives you a bit of a feel for the background of Jerry where, where we've come from, how we've got to where we are. Uh, and so to continue with the uh, theme of, of where we are now uh, and, and what we're looking to do in the future, I'll hand you over to uh, Charlie Lemaitre. Bonjour. So uh, currently we are teaching approximately 500 students across both our primary and secondary phases. Now I'm going to focus on the primary phase and after Susan, my colleague, will talk to you about the secondary. At the moment, we're active in about 10 primary schools across the island. And we're in negotiations with several others about uh, starting new classes next term. Now, traditionally, as Gerrier is not part of the official curriculum, we've had to teach small groups of students, mainly during lunchtime and after school sessions, with a few schools giving us access to students during their assembly times. And this has at times thrown up some challenges due to the fact that the lessons were relatively short, between 20 and 30 minutes, uh, and trying to have a, a quality language lesson within that time has been challenging at times. We currently have one, what we call a flagship school. Uh, the school is called Platte Douai Primary School. And they have given us access to valuable curriculum time. And currently, one of my colleagues, one of our teaching staff, Marianne Coutage, is based in the school for three days each week. Now, she splits her time uh, as an additional teacher supporting the school staff in the reception class, working on their language skills. But on top of that, she also has a 30 minute Geria lesson with a total of nine different key stage two classes uh, right the way through from year three to year six. And they work through our level one Geria course. Marianne is a early years specialist so it's really, really key that we have that contact within that school. On top of this, we also operate seven different Pallion group. Now, the word Pallion in Geria is a, means a meeting place. And these are mainly after school clubs, although we have a few that operate during the lunch hour. Again, here during this time, we tend to follow the level one course and there's progression up to level three. Uh, now, some of the difficulties that we experienced with COVID 
prompted us to reevaluate our teaching model uh, to try and focus on demonstrating to schools how Geria is relevant to our island identity and how it's woven into our history, our geography, our tradition and wider culture. Now this led to the creation of a first cross-curricular course uh, which we called Alon to Jerry. Now Alon to Jerry means around Jersey. Now Alon to Jerry is a 10 week course and has five themes based around five specific dates or periods of history uh, that are important to the island. We introduce and teach Jerry alongside local history, local geography, traditions and customs, and local traditional stories and legends. All the lessons are matched to learning aims and objectives from the Jersey curriculum. Now, each lesson is between an hour and a half to two hours long, and the lessons are taught during curriculum time, mainly during the afternoon school sessions. And this has been a real first for us in order getting into the curriculum. We deliberately designed the course to be extremely practical, and it includes art and craft activities, drama and role play, the use of games and puzzles, as well as visiting uh, our local heritage sites. Again, the scheme was deliberately designed to focus on the process rather than the product. And so there's not a large amount of writing or recording involved, and hopefully this helps with inclusivity. We also produced alongside the course an accompanying 20 page booklet, which gives extra information and again reinforces the classroom learning. Now we launched Alon to Jerry last term with four schools and we were teaching four year five classes and one year four class. And it worked really well and we had great feedback from both children, class teachers and the members of the senior management teams in those schools. But as we reflected on the feedback that we received, we decided that Alon 2 was probably more sorted and, and aimed at the lower key stage uh, two classes. Uh, and so we adapted it to this end. Alongside that, we have now also developed a second similar scheme. This one is called Jerry de Mushi, meaning Jersey Uncovered. This again is along similar lines, focusing on different historical and geographical and cultural themes. The Jerry de Mushi scheme uh, is aimed at the upper key stage two. And we are launching this next term, having already got the go ahead from three schools. Now, part of the decision to go down the cross-curricular route is to demonstrate how the Geria teaching service can produce high quality learning experiences, which put Geria at the center with a long-term view of encouraging schools to support Geria's rightful inclusion in the curriculum. So that's pretty much where we're at on our primary phase. So I'm now gonna hand over to my colleague, Susan Parker, who's going to talk to you about what's been happening uh, with the secondary uh, phase and also with our digital resources. Merci Barefe. Thank you, Charlie. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. So yes, I'm gonna to talk to you about our secondary school program and our wonderful new digital resources and exciting things that we're doing in the world of technology. So the secondary school program is quite different from what Charlie's been explaining about primary schools. So I joined the service in April and at the time our lovely colleague Aline was um, delivering the secondary school program and I've basically taken that over from her because she's moved off the island and is focusing on teaching adults now. So I work with about half the secondary schools and to give you an idea of numbers, I think there's nine secondary schools here and I'm currently working with five of them. So that can be a mixture of after school clubs, 
And sixth form enrichment, we found a new way in there that some of the sixth forms, which is 17 and 18 year olds, have kind of extracurricular enrichment as part of their day. And they really enjoy doing something new and experiencing Gerrier as being quite popular. Um, that could also be assemblies that we offer and taster sessions, which might take place in form time or in languages lessons. Now, some people say, oh, teenagers won't be interested in learning a language like this. And actually, on the contrary, I found the positive response really encouraging. Um, young people love learning languages. They don't really have negativity towards it. Once you explain that Sherry is endangered and why that is and how we need them to get on board, I find that they're really enthusiastic about it. So... I mean, it is a struggle generally to get English speakers to learn foreign languages and some of our modern foreign languages departments are seeing take up decrease of the usual popular languages like French and Spanish. So the GCSE exams that are taken at the end of um, year 11 at the age of 16, if languages are not compulsory at that school, then the take up can be quite low. So as you can imagine, encouraging those students to um, invest the time and effort that is considerable in learning a minority language can be a bit of a hard sell, but we're doing our best. So we're really happy with our, our primary uh, secondary school programs so far. So the next thing I was going to mention is digital resources. Now it's hard to imagine nowadays students young or adults learning anything without technology. So it's really important that we have modern up-to-date digital resources. Um, so we made a really um, unexpected appeal to Linguascope. So linguascope.com is a language learning platform that's global. It's, a, it's a, owned by a French um, founder called Stéphane Deron, and he's been really supportive of Cherrier. Now, the languages on there are the usual ones you see taught in schools, but then I noticed that recently some minority languages had appeared, in, including Welsh and Maori. And um, sincere thanks to Stefan at Linguascope for supporting and believing in Gerrier, because the amount of schools that his um, website will be used in, of course, is much lower than the whole of New Zealand or the whole of Wales, where we're looking in the hundreds of thousands. Here, there's 43 educational settings, which would be full capacity. So very grateful to him. And also as a result of that, we've been able to make access to the Linguascope website a free on an annual subscription basis for a year for any school setting that would like it. Now, out of the 43 settings, we have 33 signed up already, and it's only been available since October. So I think that just goes to show that there is passion for languages still. Now, the GRA resources are on there are in the beginner section. There's 55 topics, and they range from sports to pets and weather. And they're fully colorful, interactive, fun resources. They're aimed, the target age is eight to 14, but I have used it with 17 and 18 year olds and they enjoy it too. So it's a really fantastic resource. And we're really grateful to have that um, to really enrich the learning experience for learners and teachers alike. Um, now, we couldn't have done this without support of lots of people. So that particular project, I wanted to put a big shout out to Atticus Morby, who's joining us this evening. He's a very talented local languages student who's studying at Durham University, and he lent us his voice. And he is the voice of Gerrier globally on Linguiscope now. Um, and he devoted many hours to making that project happen. So thank you to Atticus. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, the Eisteddfod competition that Jean mentioned earlier. So that's, um, it's like a performance competition and the Gerrier section is popular. It's a chance for the young learners to showcase their efforts and their learning. And in 2020, um, full credit to our colleague, Marianne and the Gerrier Steadford Committee who would not give in to COVID and completely pivoted what they did and were the only section, the only languages section to take place fully online. And the um, participants recorded their entries and the adjudicators judges um, judged it virtually. And so the competition was able to take place in 2020 and it was the only one that did. So that's amazing. But it just goes to show that how if you're not scared of technology and you're prepared to try and use it, it can really be a big advantage. Now, I'm not gonna go on too much about the adult program because I think Ben's going to mention that, but that's something else that was unexpected during 2020 where Aline, um, our other colleague, decided that rather than giving in and um, just ceasing her face-to-face -face adult program, she developed online virtual classes that proved more popular than ever before. 
And the last thing to mention, I can't imagine talking about technology without mentioning social media, which rules our lives so much. So Robin, who's just joined the team recently, has made great um, strides in developing a Facebook page and an Instagram page under the heading Learn Gerrier to promote the language and some vocabulary words and just generally raise awareness about what's going on if we're at events, um, she promotes it on there. In addition to Geraint Jennings, who unfortunately couldn't join us this evening, who does a Twitter, he's prolific on Twitter, under the heading of Office du Gerrier, if you want to look him up there. So just to conclude my section, we're using technology to increase awareness of Gerrier, not just on the island, but further afield to improve access to learning resources, and also to enhance the learning experience for our younger and adult learners. Thank you. Merci bien et fait, Susan. Uh, so, um, it's my turn now, and uh, I'm gonna talk to you uh, very briefly about the adult teaching program, um, and then I'll go into a little bit more depth about the Gerrier language strategy, uh, and our plans for l'avenir, uh, the future. So um, the adult teaching program was recently taken over by the Gerrier Teaching Service. As Susan mentioned, um, our colleague Aline delivers most of those adult lessons from um, across seven levels. So from beginner right the way through to proficient conversation. So we have beginner, beginner plus, intermediate, intermediate plus, advanced and advanced plus. And then when our learners get to that advanced plus level, in order to keep them motivated, keep them learning, we offer them uh, a proficient conversation class, which uh, enables them to uh, really converse through the medium of Gerrier and, and start to contribute to the language uh, life, the life of the language. Um, Jean mentioned the La Lettre Gerriers, which is a, a radio program broadcast on BBC Radio Jersey uh, weekly. And so some of our proficient conversation students have now graduated to that level where they can contribute to that uh, program. So as Susan mentioned, most of those lessons are now delivered on uh, online you know, using Microsoft Teams, um, but we hope to be able to offer more face-to-face -face lessons again soon. Uh, we also have lessons for government ministers and employees. Uh, we've had a number of our uh, deputies and senators um, come to those lessons, and we currently have members of the States Gref uh, attending those lessons, as well as one of our deputies, and indeed our, our bailiff, our, our kind of most senior, um, uh, well, not politician as such, but uh, most senior official in the island. Um, so we, we, we've got a lot going on with the adult program. To, to talk to you a little bit more in depth about um, where we go next, so with the language strategy moving forward, we've we were, we're due to imminently publish the language strategy. Um, so it is the strategy for 2021 to 2024. I'm conscious that we are almost at the end of 2021, but it's, it's, it's been a challenge to, to, to get it out there, but we were determined to do so before the end of the year. And, and that strategy has five themes, language planning, language acquisition, use, status, and corpus, as, as Mary mentioned earlier. So to, to mention a little bit more about planning, um, unfortunately, our colleague Geraint Jennings was due to join us this evening, but he's unwell, so he would have told you a little bit about uh, the role that he has uh, at Jersey Heritage, where he's the Gerrier Promotion Officer, and one of his um, uh, tasks as part of his role is to encourage organisations to, to write their own language plans, and he is writing uh, an exemplary uh, language plan for Jersey Heritage so that other organizations can then use that um, as the basis for their own plans. The government of Jersey uh, includes Gerrier as part of its government plan uh, and, and has also produced guidance on the use of Gerrier so that um, we're now starting to see bilingual branding uh, becoming quite commonplace. Uh, we also had a, an art strategy and an idea Island Identity Consultation, uh, published very recently, both of which place the Gerrier very much at the heart of them. We also um, have the Department for Children, Young People, Education and Skills, the SIPES Department, um, which my 
teaching team is now fully integrated within that department. Um, we feature in the in the business plan of the department, and the department is due to um, publish again imminently a language policy, which um, is a policy for the whole island for all educational settings. And again, we find Gerio very much at the heart of that policy. So lots of positive uh, developments in regards to language planning. In terms of language acquisition, um, so you've heard a little bit about the Gerio teaching service um, and we, we deliver the schools program and we deliver the adult program and also the teacher training program. So we have now seven qualified teachers as part of our team. And as you heard from Charlie, we're in 10 primary schools, uh, four, or I think it's now five uh, secondary schools, as Susan pointed out. And we reach probably through all of those um, lessons, approximately 500 children. Uh, and we're growing all the time. So, so the next steps for us as um, as teachers is to perhaps develop a Gerier playgroup, uh, parent and toddlers group um, with a view to growing into at some stage a, a Gerier nursery. Uh, and we'd also like to get Gerier into the Jersey curriculum, which would be uh, an important thing to happen. And we'd, at some point in the near future, we'd like to be able to offer a Gerier qualification, something like a, a GCSE. We also have, in terms of language use, um, conversation groups, which happen every single weekday. So you can speak Gerier and hear Gerier every day of the week. We have two groups in St. Helier, uh, one on a Monday and one on a Thursday. Uh, we have one pub group, which meets in St. Helier on a Tuesday evening, one group in uh, the east of the island in St. Martin um, on a Wednesday morning, and one cafe group in St. Ouen in the west of the island that meets on a Friday. Uh, we also have, uh, we've published a number of um, picture books recently. So uh, in 2018, Jalon à la chasse à l'ours, uh, we're going on a bear hunt, Le Gruffalo in 2019, La Petite Gruffelin, uh, Gruffalo's Child in 2021, and we've got three more Julia Donaldson titles uh, due to appear next year in 2022. So we've got lots of books. And the, the idea with those has been to uh, print a thousand copies of each to be given away to children when they start, when they first start school. And it's a way of taking Gerrier uh, beyond the walls of the classroom and, and trying to get it out there into the community and into people's homes. And we encourage people to read those books at home with their children and we offer them um, an audio recording for them to to, to assist them with that. Uh, in terms of the arts, so you've heard a little bit about the, the Jersey I Stedford, uh, which continues to grow and is, is very popular. We also have a, a dancing group called Les Chaboleurs, um, the Shufflers, who meet um, once a month and are involved in um, performing at many of our festivals that we take part in. I'll tell you more about those. Um, in terms of music, we have two bands who, who sing in Gerrier. Uh, one band, Badlebeck, is a, a folk pop band who have become very well known in Jersey, uh, who, who sing entirely in Gerrier. And um, perhaps a slightly less well-known band is, is a band called Head of Helia. And if black metal is your thing, then you, you should definitely check out Head of Helia. Um, so in terms of festivals, um, we take part in a number of different festivals where Gerrier is very much a, a, a focal point of those festivals, namely La Fezid Sidre, um, the cider making festival, La Fezid Mierbar, the making of black butter festival, a, a local delicacy made from apples, uh, La Fête de Noël, the Christmas festival, the Jersey Festival of Words, which is our local literary festival, La Fête Normande, uh, which takes place uh, alternatively in Guernsey, Jersey, and the Normandy mainland. La Fête du Gerrier, of course, our very own language festival where all the events are dedicated entirely to the language. And most recently, La Folle d'Avoue, uh, or also known as the Corn Riots Festival, where we had Badlebeck as one of the, the headline acts. 
So that's our festivals. In terms of language status, um, we've had a number of propositions that have gone through our state's assembly. Most recently, uh, a proposition to promote um, the language through the public sector, which was overwhelmingly adopted. And there was also an amendment to that proposition, which was very significant to recognize Gerrier as an official language of the state's assembly. Again, also overwhelmingly adopted, um, which proves that there's, there's strong support in government for our precious language. And as a result of those propositions, as I mentioned, we've got guidelines being produced, which have resulted in the rollout of bilingual branding by the government, as you can see in the, in the picture there, Le, le Gouvernement Géry. So in terms of language corpus, we have l'Académie du Gérier, which was established in 2018 and is comprised of native speakers, linguists, and teachers. And we meet monthly uh, with the purpose of standardizing the language and agreeing on spellings and also generating neologisms, coming up with new words, new vocabulary, so that the language continues to develop as a, as a dynamic living, breathing language um, that we can teach uh, and we can teach you know, any subject uh, through Jerry. And, and in fact, one of our most, well, our most recent meeting was to discuss the language of the environment, uh, a top, topical subject with COP26. Uh, so it, we felt that it was needed to have uh, some up-to-date language to describe uh, environmental issues. Um, we also, as part of our corpus, we have um, dictionaries. So Gerrier Ongier, uh, Gerrier English, and Ongier Gerrier English Gerrier. Uh, we also have the, the, the very significant uh, dictionnaire Gerrier Francais uh, that Jean mentioned earlier, um, which is a very, very important uh, kind of Bible for us. Um, we have Le Gerrier Pour Tout, also referred to by Jean, um, a grammar book. And um, our colleague Geraint has, has recently produced a, a reference grammar, uh, which updates Le Gerrier Pour Tout, and, and will, when it's, when it's eventually published, will, will be a very significant um, publication as well. We also have, of course, um, the glossary of the Norman language in the Channel Islands, um, Professor Mary Jones's glossary, which we're, we're very happy to add to the, to the corpus, which is, is a significant addition to our corpus. So um, again, due to be published in, imminently. So we look forward to, uh, to the publication of the glossary. And we, we also are working hard to try and record as many of our native speakers as possible um, through, uh, through audio means, but also we're looking to um, to capture them on film as well. And that's it. so I'll tell you a little bit about that. So um, I'll finish up with what, what next. So as I mentioned, we, I've commissioned a, a documentary film, which really will tell the story of the language um, and will, as I say, capture those, those voices of native speakers. We're very fortunate to have our native speaking community and uh, it's very important that we capture those voices. So that's one project that's currently on the go. We hope to achieve ratification of the European Charter for Regional and Minority Languages uh, with regard to Gerrier. Uh, so that's something else we're working on. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it would be a game changer to, to get the inclusion of Gerrier in the Jersey curriculum. Uh, and so that's something we hope to achieve in the not too distant future. We will continue to expand our schools program. And in particular, we would like to develop our early years program. As, as Jean and others have mentioned, we've been very much inspired by the Isle of Man and some of the work that they've done to revitalize their language. And we've seen a very inspiring uh, early years program in the Isle of Man, which we'd love to be able to replicate here in Jersey. And then eventually we hope that that might even lead to the establishment of a, a Gerrier medium school, which really would be a very significant thing. And that's perhaps our best chance of being able to produce new speakers of Gerrier. Uh, so that's 
current situation and a little bit about Lavni, uh, the future. Um, so that's that's it from me, Merci Van Dei Fay, uh, and we'd be very happy to answer any of your questions. Merci Van Dei Fay. Sorry, merci uh, Ben. Um, I think we, we've all now uh, seen how dynamic the uh, situation is in uh, Jersey, but also how passionate the entire team are. Thank you very much to all our speakers for giving us a absolutely wonderful uh, introduction uh, to uh, the situation in uh, Jersey. Um, so it's my pleasure now to open the floor to um, to the Q&A. So if anybody has any uh, questions, as we said at the beginning, then um, either would you uh, write them in the chat or um, I, if you would uh, like to, to speak, um, then um, of course, uh, raise your hand and um, your, uh, which is under your reactions button, and I'll invite you to speak.